a championship. He scores! The 1996 Minnesota State High School Boys Hockey Tournament on UPN 9. It's game time. Now, your host, Minnesota 9 News Sports Director, Jeff Grayson. Well, I got a 50-50 chance of doing it. Maybe I'm just going to stand right here and come out, cut the angle a bit, go back and see what happens. He scores! Well, if you watch him on one two of the most memorable in moments in state Duluth hockey Duluth tournament right. history, this Duluth East Dave left. Spihar hitting a penalty shot against Moorhead in last year's championship game. It propelled the Greyhounds to the state tournament win, winning 5-3. Well, now we are back. It is 1996, and what electricity in the air at the St. Paul Civic Center. The number one team, the state's number one player, they go for a repeat. And the two men who called last year's game, they're here to bring it to you tonight. Wally Shaver and Lou Nanny, guys, there is some kind of spark in this building right now. Oh, no question about it, Jeff. The people have been waiting to see Duluth East for a long time. They're up in Duluth. The people down in the cities here don't get that opportunity. But, Louie, I can never forget the performance that Spihar turned in last year, getting three hat tricks in three games. It really was an amazing performance, and if you look at him coming back this year, he's come back with another 46 goals. The most amazing thing is Duluth East, with their top forward line, has 87 goals. That's more than many teams in this tournament, three lines together. They are a scoring <laughs> machine, and no one scores more often than Dave Spihar who's been the player of the year. This kid knows how to put the puck in the net. He's been terrific all the way through his career, and it just doesn't seem that there's any way that people can stop this guy from scoring goals. Well, we're going to have a chance to meet Dave Spihar and the rest of his teammates and the Blaine Bengals, a team that's going to try to keep him off the scoreboard. Karen Yeager's a First Bank customer not just because she can transfer funds by phone through Fastline, or use her Checkster card instead of writing checks, or get an account summary from a FastBank ATM machine. Karen's a loyal customer because only First Bank puts so many ways of handling her family's money right at her fingertips. Place the diamond. And can you imagine facing three pitches? Emerson on base. Oh, the base ejector got him snoozing. He goes Why did it all change? All sport. The game just got too easy. The unsurpassed taste of all sport. A third more carbs than Gatorade for energy could make a difference. Next yeah, up, your grandson's up. Ken Griffey the four. He can act. It's going. It's going. Watch out, center board. Oh! Center board got him. He was robbed. All sport body quencher. The game will never be the same. What's hockey going to be like in the 21st century? Slap shots with zero gravity. Travel teams who take on the Mars Mavericks on their turn. Fast skating players who snap in shots with real power. This is 21st century hockey. You need hockey sticks, shafts, and blades that stay tough in any atmosphere. You need Christian Brothers. Hockey is heating up. Stick with Christian, the official hockey stick of the WCHA. This is the hottest ticket in town tonight, folks. Blaine versus Duluth East. Let's now go down Mike's side to Mr. Dick Stanford and meet the contestants in tonight's game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, good evening once again, and we are welcome. Ready for the beginning of the second session of our 51st Minnesota State High School Boys Hockey Tournament. We'll begin our introductions by meeting the cheerleaders from the respective schools. First, let's meet the cheerleaders from Blaine. <laughs> Kelly Berg. Job, Heather Compton. Hi, Mom. Love you, Dad. Nicole Dacus. Hi, Mom and Dad. I love you. Jenny Moore. Oh, please, number one. Carissa Strang. Hi, Peter. I love you. Good luck, Bingo. 
and Mary Sorensen. And now let's meet the cheerleaders from Duluth East. Angela Marmon. Christina Thompson. Melissa Leon. Sarah Frost. Whitney Houston. And Sarah Fisher. Hi. And now let's meet the players. First, the champions of Section 4AA with a record of 19, 4, and 1, the Bengals from Blaine. First senior goaltender number one, Jesse Bidal. Junior defenseman number three, Scott Brown. Senior defenseman number six, Mike Pudlick. Senior defenseman number seven, Jesse Nicholson. Sophomore center number eight, Tim Larson. Junior wing at number 11, Sean Birdie. Junior wing, number nine, Dan Johnson. Junior wing, number 12, Corey Pikarski. Senior wing, number 14, Nate Larson. Senior center, number 15, Jason Miskowick. Junior wing number 19, Corey Moore. Junior wing number 20, Matt Perucci. Senior wing number 21, Reed Bodie. Senior center number 26, Brad Zinda. Junior defenseman, number 27, Mike Walsh. Junior defense, number 28, Tom Ryman. Sophomore wing, number 31, Vince Perez. Junior goaltender, number 35, Mark Birmingham. Senior defense, number 36, Kevin Kilpatrick. And senior wing number 37, Mark Will. Bengals head coach, Steve Larson. His assistant, Scott Bukestad and Steve Guider. The Blaine Bengals. And now let's meet the champions of section 7AA and the defending state champions with a record of 23 and two. The Greyhounds from Duluth East. First, junior defense number four, Ryan Cool. Senior defense number five, Pat Gunderson. Senior defenseman number six, Cullen Flaherty. Junior defense, number seven, Dylan Mills. Junior center, number eight, Matt Mathias. Senior wing, number 11, Matt Latour. Senior wing, number 12, Dave Umquist. Freshman defenseman number 13, Steve Soikonen. Junior wing number 15, Ben Johnson. Junior center number 16, Nick Anderson. Senior wing number 20, Eric Patosha. Freshman defenseman number 22, Patrick Finnegan. Junior wing number 23, John Tufty. 
Senior center number 25, Ted Soikonen. Junior wing number 27, Brandon Johnson. Senior center number 28, Chris Locker. Junior goaltender number 29, Kyle Colquist. Junior wing number 31, Andy Wheeler. Senior wing number 33, Dave Spihar. Sophomore goaltender number 35, Adam Cool. Greyhounds head coach is Mike Randolph and his assistant, Larry Traxel. Ladies and gentlemen, the officials for this game, the linesman is Rick Bauer and the referees are Frank Larson and Scott Parker. And now we ask you to please stand and honor America as the Duluth East High School Band under the direction of Bill Tormanson leads us in our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to the center ice area for the reading of the sportsmanship code representing Blaine High School's team, Jason Miskowick, representing Duluth East, Chris Locker. Is it on? Good evening. Welcome to the Minnesota State High School Hockey League State Hockey Tournament. We appreciate your attendance at this tournament and hope you enjoy it. The State Hockey Tournament is being played under the rules of the Minnesota State High School League. These rules provide for fair play and good sportsmanship among players and coaches. As athletes, we ask that spectators promote the ideals of good sportsmanship, fair play, respect for our opponents, and the calls of the officials. Thank you. And sportsmanship certainly has been a key ingredient so far in the tournament that we've seen now in day two, Louie. Good, clean play. The fans have been extremely supportive, and we really haven't had a lot of penalties called. And yet we've had some real good physical play, Wally. Yesterday, War Road's game was very physical. The South St. Paul game today was physical. Overall, we've seen some real hard hits, yet kids are learning how to body check without taking penalties. It's been very impressive that they're willing to take the checks, learn how to hit, and not take penalties. They've been clean games, hard-fought games, but as you said, good sportsmanship, and kids are not taking unnecessary penalties at all. Well, the Blaine Bengals will not want to take any unnecessary penalties against the Duluth East Greyhounds because they are an awesome team, loaded offensively. They've averaged 7.3 goals per game this year. They have scored 184 goals in 20 five games how do you stop something like that it's going to be pretty tough to stop you know Duluth is going to find some way to score your key is to keep their goals four down and you've got to get more goals than them Kyle Colquist in the nets 
for Duluth East has got a 20 and 2 record of 1.7 goals against average so you know they've got good goaltending as well the key is to get your goaltender hot tonight make sure the shots are coming from angle shots keep the slot clear somehow some way that first line of Duluth is going to score goals tonight they always yeah. do it's going to be tough to keep them off the board what you want to do is really cut down the goals that they do score if they can get come out of here with just one goal you got a chance. Birmingham in the Nets is going to have a lot of work tonight. He's got 2.18 goals against. His record 13 and 2, and he's played some solid goal for Blaine. And Blaine has, you know, they come up with a, a fine effort. I watched a film that uh, Dick Rathune from the questions got to me of their final game against Osseo, and they had a good effort. I think uh, they're ready to play tonight, but they've got a big task in front of them. Here is Wheeler to Spihar. Dave Spihar across the line, fires, he scores! Unbelievable! <laughs> unbelievable! The kid is unbelievable. It's just amazing how he finds ways to score goals. He just takes a bullet shot down low on Birmingham. Goal stick side, he took a pass on the right side, just got across the blue line, let fly, and he's on his way again. Three hat tricks last year, and right now he's on his way to who knows what, but he doesn't take long. Look at him right now. Go to the outside, fire through the defenseman, and all it takes, if a defenseman screens it at all, with the way he shoots the puck, the goaltender's not going to have a chance. He goes to his right, a good move, and see how he fires right past the skates. And if you can shoot a puck down low past the boot of the skate, it's tough for a goaltender to pick up immediately. 17 seconds into this hockey game, Spiha has the first. Now some rough stuff going on. On a collision inside the Blaine blue line, but it's an offside. Well, Blaine doing what they have to do, use the body, take the check, and that's what they did. Right off the bat, Mark Zinda along the left boards made a good check on Locker. And that's what Blaine is going to have to do to slow down Duluth East here tonight. When they get the opportunity, take the body. Take him yeah. out of the play, eliminate him. And I think that's going to be their battle plan here tonight if they're going to have any chance at all against Duluth East. A team with 15 returning lettermen from last year's championship squad. Blaine starting up from their own blue line. Finnegan throws a check in front of his own bench for Duluth East, and these guys can wheel and deal. They like to float somebody out towards center. We're already seeing that. Blaine has to be aware. There's a shot that bounces off the goalkeeper, Colquist, and into the corner. Duluth East picking up the puck in their own zone. Number 15 is Johnson. There's three Johnsons in this game. It's Ben Johnson for Duluth East. He relays it in deep, and heading back for Blaine is Corey Pekarski. They start up from their goal line. Pass just goes to center. Flaherty takes it there for the Greyhounds and puts it right back in. Ryan Cool, Pat Gunderson, Colin Flaherty, and Dalen Mills all back on defense for Duluth East from last year's championship team. This is Flaherty behind his goal. Headman pass is blocked, picked off by Blaine. A backhander goes wide of the goal. And this is Wheeler picking it up now for the Greyhounds. Up to Chris Locker, the playmaker on that dangerous line. Spihar throws a big check at center ice. Flaherty around for Wheeler. His pass goes out to center and is taken there by Pudlick for Blaine. Bengals trailing. Good hit by Wheeler. Back comes. Duluth East, a long shot is right on goal off the stick of number 25, Ted Slakenen. Bengals try the right side this time. Vince Perez, who had two goals in that championship game in the sections, helps to steer the puck to center. Now Mike Walsh, the defenseman, had it momentarily. Puck comes on goal to Birmingham, who makes the save, playing it off to his right. Bengals right back up ice. I think they're over those jitters now, and it might have cost them that goal early on, Louis. Well, one thing Blaine's got to be very careful of is pulling out of the zone too quick and getting outnumbered like this. They, they seem to want to get the long pass, and, and Duluth East is very, very capable of stealing pucks on the offensive uh, forecheck, so they've got to be careful of that. It's 1-0, Duluth East scoring in the first few seconds of the game. We'll be back for more of this quarterfinal matchup. The Dodge Magnum Power Surge. It's your chance to get $1,000 off any Dakota, up to $3,500 off club cabs. It's your chance to save on the truck that beats Ranger, S10, and Sonoma on resale, and a whole lot more. 
But to get Magnum power and Magnum savings, you'll have to move like, well, you know, at America's truck stop, the new Dodge. Paulie, I like the way Blaine has reacted to that goal. They've come back and they've been a little physical and, and they're skating. They're putting, you know, a little pressure on offensively and, and they're, they're not sitting back. That goal didn't really get them all discombobulated. They seem to be aggressive out there right now. Blaine Bengal with a puck inside their own zone as Mike Walls tries to clear it out. Top line out there now for Blaine. Here they come roaring out of the zone. Tom Ryman, the defenseman, going in deep. Backhands it on goal. And Colquist has to be quick and pounces on that puck. And Blaine had their forward, Pekarski, take Ryman's spot back in the blue line. That's something they're going to have to do. If a defenseman rushes with the puck, someone's got to take his position back in the point. As you see Ryman going around the outside and getting a backhand shot on Colquist because Duluth East will turn that puck back up ice very quickly. And if you've only got one defenseman back there, you're going to have problems. You've got to have somebody back you up. You move up in the play, someone's got to pick up that point spot. There's a lot of big players on this Greyhound team, too, and they like to use the weight. Here they come out of the zone. This is Ted Soikinen down the left side. His shot right on goal. Birmingham with a stick save. Now it's played around the goal to Soikinen. Tosses it back to the other side for Patosha. He can't find Almquist, and the Bengals intercept. Trying to get an on-man rush. Here's Perez across the line. Snaps one off, and that just goes wide through the crease. Roll back down low by Johnson. Put out in front, shot from the point, hits the leg, and bounces high in the air, but stays inside the zone. Here's Dylan Mills. Around the other door. Puck is tipped and gets out to center, but we have a penalty coming up. On a check from behind call. This will be at 402. You might have even been able to call that Albuin as well. E either one. There was no doubt that he was going to get a penalty. I think it's Walsh is going to be going off. Duluth East getting their first opportunity in the power play already leading 1-0. And this is a time that Blaine's got to be very diligent in their own zone because you know Duluth East will try and get that puck to Spihar. Somehow he finds a way to get open. And when he is open, he's usually open in a good scoring position. People can talk about some power plays, but you want to hear some power play stats. We'll tell you in a moment here about the Luthiest. Blaine tries it clear. Is Gunderson holding it in? Blaine gets a second try and they skate it up ice. With it is Reed Bodie. Going into the corner himself for it. And Dave Spihar is back. Here comes Spihar. This power play for Duluth East is at 85% recently. Here's a shot by Spihar. A little bit weak, but it's hung on to by Birmingham this time. Well, Spihar went around the outside, but the defenseman forced him wide, made a good play on it. Pudla kept him to his backhand, and the goaltender, Birmingham, played it smartly. Didn't give him anything to shoot at. Spihar coming down, usually a, a normal move for a right-hand skater is to your left. And you, every year right hand shot you usually go to your left that's what Spihar did and he really didn't have much of an angle there when you see a real good move a right hander that can go to his right or a left hander goes to his left is something that can fool a checker because that's not normal your normal move your natural move is always to your back end Blaine clears his own here comes Ryan Cool, what a tournament he had last year. Surprised he didn't make it to the all tourney team. And he's been their most improved player all year. Buck is chopped, gets past Cool, and he'll regroup at center. Makes a quick spin to turn it up ice. It rolls off Spihar's stick, and back after it now is Dylan Mills. Duluth keeping two guys up in the blue line area Blaine as they set things up really like to open the ice almost a two on one evolving but Blaine breaks up the play and a shot back down by Pudlick into the Duluth East zone Blaine doing a good job killing this penalty Duluth really not having any good scoring chance the only one when Spihar came in from the wing Ben Johnson brings it in driving towards the net Bengals there to clear it out not likely though as it's held in by Gunderson with a shot on goal Ten seconds left in the Blaine penalty. Here's Soikinen. 
Drops it to the point for Gunderson. Back down low, put out across his slot. Nobody home, but they get hit. Blaine's penalty has expired, so they're back at full strength and have killed off the first Duluth East power play. Actually, defenseman Scott Braun had good position on that pass across for Duluth. That's why they couldn't connect. He was right in between the, the passer and the shooter. Oh, Moskowitz scores! Came across the line, waiting for teammates to get onside, and he let one rip. And Colquist just reached up with his glove and hit his glove and went in. Many times you take those shots for granted. It looked like an innocent enough shot. Muskowitz doing what you have to do when you got the puck and you have a shot on net. No one there around to help you or give the puck to. Put it on the net, and that's what he did. Jason Miskowitz put it right on the goaltender's glove side. It hit his glove and rebounded right into the net. Watch this. It looked like a harmless enough shot. Polk was down, reached up, just got part of it. The rest of it was enough to propel it in the net, and we've got a tie game. Offside at the blue line as play resumes. And our Banville scoreboard shows a contest that now is knotted up. We'll be back for more. Over time, things have changed around here. Some got bigger, some got better, but some got it right, right from the start, like Banville. After all this time, it's still the broadleaf herbicide for corn. Still the one that lasts from spike to canopy. Sure things change. Banvel just hasn't needed to. Banvel, now more than ever, it's still the best. You're looking at Jason Miskowick coming from the boards on an angle shot, putting it on the net, and just befuddling Colquist, who reached up, didn't get it all. Puck ends up in the net, we've got a tie game, and Blaine responded very well after they gave up the early quick goal to Spear. They killed the penalty, they kept the shots down, they're not giving Duluth East much room in the scoring area. Even killing the penalty, Spihar came from the outside on a bad angle, and other than that, they didn't have any opportunities. Blaine using their body up front, keeping Duluth somewhat off balance and playing a pretty solid period thus far. We got a 1-1 tie here. There's head coach Mike Randolph in his eighth season. Came out of St. Scholastica where he was uh, for a couple of years and three years as an assistant at the University of Minnesota Duluth with Mike Sertich. And he's got his top line out there of Andy Wheeler, Chris Walker, and Dave Spihar. But here's an opportunity for the Blaine Bengals and a shot by Zinda that rises over the net. Now in behind the goal, here is uh, number 15, Miskowitz. Back in the point, there's a sharp shot that just goes wide. At the point, the Bengals keep it into the Duluth zone. Cool pins his man up along the wall. Locker digs it loose. Here's captain Chris Locker through the middle. Chris crossing with Spihar. Locker wide to the outside. Locker behind the net now for Spihar. Puts it in front. Wheeler shoots right on. Birmingham dives out and controls the puck. And then Locker is flattened by a host of Bengals. There's a break in the action. And we'll be right back with the 96 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Being a parent means getting the most for your money. Introducing the 96 Lumina. For a lot less than Ford Taurus GL, you get 24-hour roadside assistance, a bumper-to-bumper -bumper limited warranty, and now you can get a great lease payment on a well-equipped Lumina. You see, we've worried about everything so you don't have to. The 1996 Lumina, a car your family can trust. Test drive one today at your Heartland Chevrolet Geo dealers. East just had their best opportunity. Wheeler getting set up by Spihar coming around the net. Spihar laid it right out front to Wheeler, but Birmingham made the save and we're tied at one. Back at center ice, number five, Gunderson to Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson has to go chase it down in his own zone for Duluth. And here's Flaherty with the puck. Cullen Flaherty, the senior, four goals on the year. Offensive minded with a very good shot. Helps it on ice. Bengals back for it. There's a crunching blow thrown along the boards by Pofty. And the third line is out there for Duluth East. Here's an interception now for number 27, Mike Walsh, a defenseman of Blaine. Walsh lost it in the skates of number 26, Brad Zinda. <laughs> 
Controlled now by Pudlick. Mike Pudlick helps it up ice and heads off as the Bengals complete some changes. And here is Finnegan. Just a young kid, a ninth grader, but there's folks that say he is the next Mike Crowley. A ninth grader right now. Keep that in mind. He's got three more years at the school. That is Finnegan taking the man into the board. That puck comes loose out in front. There's a scramble. The Bengals with some opportunities. Turning, firing. Oh, that shot right on goal. And Colquist made a save. I don't know how he saw it, but there was a lot of traffic in front of him. Bengals putting on some pressure down there. Blaine is really using their size up front. They're taking them in. They're being physical, and they're getting control of the puck along the boards, causing E some problems. Delayed offside, finally whistled as a Blaine Bengal touched the puck inside the Duluth zone. Even though Blaine is actually, when you look at the two teams, Blaine is somewhat smaller than Bobby, Duluth okay. East. Duluth East has got six fellas six feet and over. Blaine's got three, but Blaine's been more physical, and they're coming up with some pucks. You can see the flurry in front of the net. It was a loose puck, and Volkos had to make two saves, one on the wraparound, and then when the puck goes back to the blue line, the shot from there is when he swatted away with his glove. Blaine using their body effectively thus far. That goes in behind the goal. Here is Dylan Mills circling back for it. Takes going left, heads off right, passes behind Spihar, but Locker carries on. Spihar swipes it into the zone. Wheeler to Locker. Locker centers it. Spihar is covered like a rug out in front. There's a penalty coming up as Tom Ryman hauled down Dave Spihar. And as goaltender Birmingham gains possession, the penalty call will be made against Blaine. Another power play coming up, folks, for the Duluth East Greyhounds, and they'll try to break this tie hockey game. UPN Lions game time coverage of the Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament is brought to you in part by Dairy Queen and your Viking Land GMC dealers. KMSP Television has purchased the broadcast rights to the 96 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. No broadcast, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and account of this hot copyrighted telecast is permitted without the written authority of KMSP Television and the Minnesota State High School League. Well, you should have seen Ryman just stayed with Spihar all the way around the net and back out in the middle. Finally pulled him down and got a penalty, but he was glued to him. Undoubtedly, Blaine's coach has told the players, whoever's got Spihar in that zone, you stay with him and don't <laughs> let him loose. And boy, Ryman stuck right with him. Matthias for Duluth East. Hook, but gets the puck to the point for Gunderson. His long bomb is on goal. Birmingham saves on the other point. Flaherty down low, a backhand shot. Hit the side of the goal. That came off the stick of number 12, Dave Almquist. Matthias to Almquist. Almquist trying to break free, does. Cuts out in front, and his shot goes wide as he fell down. Soikinen. It's back to the point for Gunderson. To Flaherty, winds, fires. Deflected wide. Matthias now to Soikinen. On to the point for Gunderson to Flaherty. Boy, they work it around quickly. There's a big shot. And it hits traffic going wide. Ted Soikinen back to the point for Gunderson. Now to Soikinen. Right point for Flaherty. There it goes. And the shot again stopped by goaltender Mike Birmingham. And this second unit of Duluth East, much more effective than the first power play that the number one unit had against Blaine, using their points very well, moving that puck, setting up screens in front, and getting some good shots on that. Birmingham had to make a couple of nice saves. Here's Dylan Mills, number seven, shooting it in. Dave Spihar, first guy in for it. Andy Wheeler behind the goal for the playmaker. Chris Locker hands it off to Spihar. Back to Locker on the other side. Look at this guy, Gypsy Doodle. He is crafty. He will be a Badger next year. Wheeler going after the loose puck. Gets free. Centers it. Just a little bit behind Spihar, cutting to the net. From the point, a shot by Cool is just off target. Here's Locker. Blaine has killed off the penalty. Locker, some nice movement back behind the goal. The Spihar to Wheeler, he scores! Well, that's textbook. 
Goals Brennick. Oh, goals don't come any prettier than that. You saw a lot of good puck control behind the net by Locker. And finally, after he gets pressure, he gives it over to Spihar. Spihar, very intelligent beside the net. Everybody worries about him. All he does is lays it right out front to Wheeler, who's all alone, Birmingham, with no chance. Look at Locker back behind the net, doing some good puck control, handling the lead. Right along the net is Spihar. He gets the pass, and he puts it out front to 31 Wheeler, who put it home. Just a great three-way uh -huh. play. That's pretty. Two passes and a shooter right on the doorstep with an open net Wheeler. He puts it away. Two to one, Duluth East Greyhounds. Right back on the attack. Mike Walls for the shot wide for Blaine. I get Blaine credit. They're staying in this game. They're doing a fine, fine job. They really are. Here comes Toffee. Handing it off to Matthias, number eight. Try to get it back to the big Toffee. Toffee throws a check and sends his guy on top of the goal. Gunderson from the point. And number five, Gunderson will have to get back rapidly as he's being pursued rather quickly by number nine, Johnson. This is Dan Johnson. East bringing it back. Bengals clear of the zone, and Poole has it at center. Bengals starting up from their own line. Defenseman Mike Walls lost the puck. Here's a two-on-one. Soikinen flipping it across just over the stick of Patosha. Ted Soikinen behind the goal. Things bounce along the wall. Now number 12 is Almquist. He's checked. Pinching in his mills to keep it alive, but the Bengals are there. Flip at the center. Here's an outlet pass to Perez, but it's taken out of the play by Cool and hammered into the end boards. Mills moves it to neutral. Bengals have to wait as Johnson was still trapped into the zone. Right back comes the Lord Davis as Walker putting it in front for Spihar. He scores. That's two. Boy, that kid is something. If you notice the pass by Locker, he had to drag the puck from behind. The pass from Locker to Spihar was a little behind, yet Spihar had the presence of mind to pull that puck. He knows he's in close on the goaltender. You only have one place to go upstairs, and that's where he goes. See the pass behind? He's got to pick it up, drag it, and he beats him up top. Birmingham got a stick, glove on it. But Locker, who was being hooked right there by Pudluck, still was able to get the pass across. Not a lot on it. Spihar reached back, gets it, puts it away, gets the second of the period, second of the tournament, and Duluth is up three to one. Coach Mike Randolph told me he wouldn't be surprised, and he's certainly not trying to brag, but he said he wouldn't be surprised if Spihar duplicates his three hat tricks of last year. And he's well on his way. Hey, yeah. eh? you gotta be. He's got to be seen. He's got good odds to get one now. If he's got two of this quick, you know he's going to get more chances. Oh, yeah. Mark but Will. The amazing thing, Wally, is goal scores find a way to put it in the net. You know, many guys would have taken the same shot, and the goaltender's glove would have stopped it. Somehow yep. the goal scorer's shots go in the net. <laughs> Just be fuddling. 48 goals on the year now for Dave Spihar. There's a long shot on target by number 26, Brad Zinda, the big sniper for Blaine. A crash right below our cameraman. And back in behind his own goal is Mike Pudlick. Pudlick to Zinda. Finds Pekarski on the far side. His snapshot is blocked by Flaherty. Around to his partner, Gunderson. 15 is Ben Johnson. He's checked. Zinda relays it to the point. Stepping up is number nine, uh, Dan Johnson. But as he releases, the buzzer sounds bringing a close to the period. We'll be right back for more of this great quarterfinal game between Duluth East and Blaine in just a moment. Brandy sets off a chain reaction. You burned a chain letter? Oh, no, new Boisha. Tuesday at 7 on UPN 9. This is the highest scoring period that Lou and I have had a chance to do so far in this tournament. Lots of goals scored, and three of them coming off the sticks of the Duluth East Greyhounds, the number one rated team 
and the defending state champions. Our GP goal, end of the period scoreboard, shows the Hounds up by a pair, and we'll be back for intermission. Once again, experts are predicting an easy winner. For Jeep Cherokee sport owners anyway, it's 190 horsepower engine, four-wheel drive and anti-lock brakes turn even the harshest conditions into a day at the beach. And now get no charge air and a lease rate of just $2.59 a month. Jeep Cherokee Sport, the perfect way to turn a wild winter into a mild winter. For the best in automotive sales, service, and value, see your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. From tournaments past, this Great Clip is brought to you by Great Clips for Hair. With time running out in the score tide, John Austin from International Falls skates around the Totino Grace defense and fires a shot to the upper left corner of the net with only 18 seconds remaining. International Falls wins the 1995 Class A Boys Hockey Tournament, taking home their sixth championship trophy. This Great Clip brought to you by Great Clips for Hair. After a long, rough night, the last thing you need is an even rougher morning. But Super America can give you a head start. Whether your choice of fuel is Super America's 92 octane with Injector Guard Plus, freshly brewed 100% gourmet blend coffee, or a freshly baked Super Mom's muffin, you'll make it to the finish line in record time. Super America. When it comes to giving you a super start, you never stop. I like Once Upon a Child because my kids outgrow everything so fast, it's hard to keep up. At Once Upon a Child, I can save lots of money on toys, clothes, and everything I need. It's a great place for me to bring my kids stuff that they don't need anymore, and they pay on the spot. They've got this fun play area where I can drop off the kids while I shop. They have a great selection, and they carry name brands. The staff is really knowledgeable, and they're always so helpful. I love it. Once Upon a Child, we buy, sell, and trade new and gently used kids stuff. This is a Minnesota 9 News Update. Good evening, I'm Gary Rebstock. A Minneapolis cop is in stable condition after falling off a parking ramp. Officer Alan Williams was chasing a suspicious vehicle. A struggle then led to, to a 30-foot fall. The 16-year-old driver is in custody. St. Paul firefighters have begun their patrol of two elementary schools, part of a new project to keep kids safe. Parents are meeting tonight to discuss recent abduction attempts and to plan long-term efforts. And an appeal has postponed the sentencing of state trooper Eugene Pollard. A jury convicted him of rape, but another acquitted his partner, accused of the same crime. Pollard wants the verdict overturned. He'll have a hearing next week. And we'll have more news after the second period. If you asked Minnesota 9 news photographers what their most difficult assignment is, they'd probably say when our reporters are on the loose. <laughs> Most convenient things in the last 24 hours? Take out last night and... If you really want to see what goes on behind the scenes, you could learn to operate a boom mic. Or you can catch the entertainment report on Minnesota's most convenient newscast. We've only played one period, but Dave Spihar of Duluth East already has two goals and an assist. The Greyhounds lead Blaine 3-1 in our first quarterfinal of the night in class double a welcome back everybody i'm jeff grayson duluth east dave speehauer is the associated press player of the year in the state of minnesota and he's one of the state's best scorers ever but john mayasich is the player all are measured against come tourney time he is the legend of minnesota high school hockey look through a record book and one name jumps out john mayasich evelyn 1948 through 51 the records are plenty. Most tournament points all time, 46, 36 all time goals. I look at some of the records and I'm quite embarrassed maybe the fact I uh, didn't get the assists I uh, might have got in college and later on. Massachusetts teams won championships all four years. Willard Eichela, the future coach at Edina, played goalie. For a lot of us growing up in Eveleth, Minnesota, we started on the outdoor rinks and then uh, every Saturday probably played indoors. And uh, our dream back then was to play on the high school team. So uh, at that time, we weren't thinking of college or Olympics or professional hockey. Uh, the dream was to play in the state tournament uh, in St. Paul. Mayasich has two single tournament records, 18 points and 15 goals back in 51. His eight points and seven goals the same year are game records. 
Teams played 12-minute periods. Back then, we were able to play. It wasn't as physical. Uh, they didn't run you down. Uh, you didn't have the checking from behind and holding, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it, uh, it was more wide open. I think gave us more opportunity to uh, more or less freelance on the ice. Mayasich is also a legend from playing at the U of M under coach John Mariucci. Mayasich holds career records for points and goals. He graduated with an education degree in 1955, then joined the Army's Transportation Corps. He played for Mariucci again on the 1956 Olympic team. That team didn't win the gold, but Mayasich skated on the 1960 squad in Squaw Valley, California, that did. From Eveleth to Minneapolis to Europe and back, Mayasich has gotten the most out of hockey the close friendships and again the camaraderie uh, which was so important no. and opportunity in business and uh, and career which uh, ultimately was probably the biggest plus and uh, for those that you know always ask the question why or are you sorry you didn't have the opportunity you didn't play in the uh, nhl and how do you feel and uh, i don't think i could trade this career that i've had uh, uh, for any that you know might have involved in the National Hockey League. Well, former Gopher John Mayasich, we're going to see Dave Spihar play for the Gophers coming up this fall. We've got much more from the St. Paul Civic Center. Stay with us as Double A quarterfinal Wednesday continues. Thursday. Being a parent means getting the most for your money. Introducing the 96 Lumina. For a lot less than Ford Taurus GL, you get 24-hour roadside assistance, a bumper-to-bumper -bumper limited warranty, and now you can get a great lease payment on a well-equipped Lumina. You see, we've worried about everything, so you don't have to. The 1996 Lumina, a car your family can trust. Test drive one today at your Heartland Chevrolet Geo dealers. Baseball sure has changed, Junior. Yeah, the XCOM replaced the diamond. And can you imagine facing three pitches? Emerson on base. Oh, the base ejector got him snoozing. He goes Glad sailing. it all changed. All sport. Game just got too easy. The unsurpassed taste of all sport. A third more carbs than Gatorade for energy could make a difference. Next yeah, up. Your grandson's up. Ken Griffey the fourth. He can ask. It's going. It's going. Watch out, center Oh! Center Bluff got him. He was robbed. All sport body quencher. The game will never be the same. Jim Munoz isn't a First Bank customer just because they gave him his first checking account, or the car loan that he wanted, or the school loan that he needed. Jim's a First Bank customer because they gave his dad the business loan that he needed to grow the company and hire the right talent to make it prosper. Everybody can afford to have a nice truck if they shop at Kessler. Save money by buying wholesale on bed liners, running boards, utility boxes, hitches, and trailers, all at discounted prices. Shop at Kessler Wholesale and save money. Introducing Same Day Dentures. From only $190, you can have dentures custom made for you the same day. Our own dentist and on-site lab saves you time and money. Now that's something to smile about. Same Day Dentures. I know there's thousands of people around the state who want to watch Duluth East, and in particular, the Dave Spihar and Chris Locker show. And Louie, they didn't have to wait long. The scoring machine and his driver are on the way. <laughs> you see Spihar getting a nice long pass from Wheeler, and he just lets fly with a shot right through the defenseman. Just a bullet drive down low. That put Duluth East up 17 seconds into the period, <laughs> one nothing. Well, Blaine came right back, though. Yeah, Miskovic. Puts a shot on the net from the right side. Goaltender Kolka seems to fight it off his glove into the net. And that ties the game. And Blaine has been playing a pretty strong game thus far. But how can he keep Spihar off the board? Even when the pass is behind him, he reaches for the pass from Locker in tight. Puts it upstairs off the goaltender's glove, Birmingham. And that put Duluth East up 3-1. to one. They just don't stop Spihar. He got find a way to score. You got to realize that that goal, he, I mean, it happened so quick. We had the advantage of slowing the tape down, but it was quick the way he did it. 3-1, to one, Duluth East leading after the first 15 minutes. We'll be back for period number two in just a moment. Power up your workshop with dazzling deals from Menard. Save on a wide selection of air compressors from Campbell Hausfeld. A one-horsepower model is $174. Air tools are also on sale. 
at style and security with lock sets from Schlage. Flare Passage locks are on sale for $16.47. Entry handle set $68.95. Menards is your place for Schlage lock sets. Save big money at Menards. 92 KQRS plays the best classic rock like this. Not this. Take a look around, brother. And KQ plays the best new rock, like this. Not this. So for the best classic and new rock, turn on Mighty 2 KQRS, the Minnesota original. A bullet is indiscriminate. It has no idea where it's going or where it'll end up. If you see a gun in school, call Student Stop Guns. 1-800-44-CRIME. It's anonymous. You're traveling down the road in your new Paseo when you come upon a man who looks too much like your ex-boyfriend to be anyone else but him. And just when you're about to lend a hand... You remember his line about needing more space, so you give it to him. The all-new, uniquely used Toyota Paseo. Moesha, Tuesday at 7 on UPN 9. Duluth East with a 3-1 lead after one period. We're on our way to the second period, but let's take care of some business first. This is the seventh consecutive year that Toyota and your local Toyota dealer have sponsored the Toyota School Spirit Competition. A winning school will be chosen live during the Class AA Championship game on Saturday night. That school wins the use of a 1996 Premier Van for a year. Again, this year, entries have been collected from high schools around the state. One of the 12 finalists is Jordan High School from Jordan, Minnesota. Hey, that makes sense. Mark Rugerberg, the principal there in Jordan, Minnesota, will give that van away on Saturday night. If there were a van of great scorers in Minnesota history, did the feature on John Mayasich in between periods, you got to put Spihar and Mayasich together, guys. If only they could play together through a magic time machine, huh? That would be a wonderful experience. If, I suppose with computer enhancement, you can do those things nowadays, eh? Yeah. Wouldn't that be a line? Get as many goals as you want. <laughs> Maybe put Neil Broughton between them, feed him. <laughs> That'd be pretty nice. <laughs> All right, here we go with period number two. But you can't take anything away from Locker. Chris Locker's done a pretty yeah. good job he can for Spihar as it is. One thing I like to see, Duluth comes out in between periods. They skate around. Lane's got 14 guys on the ice stretching. It always amazes me why kids don't stretch in the locker room and come out. You've only got a minute or two to skate and, and get your skating legs and skate around the ice. But somehow it's developed over the years that kids come out and they just fall on the ice. Those kind of stretching things they should do in the, in the locker room and use that time in between period <laughs> starting in the one minute to skate around and get a few laps in. Duluth East with the puck in their own zone. Falling down the far side is number 12, Dave Almquist. Almquist getting back to his feet, roars out of the zone. He's got open ice, crosses the line, cuts to the middle. Squeezed off the play by a nice sound effort by the Blaine defenseman, Mike Public. Gunderson back for it. Rings it around, but it's right under the stick of 37. Mark Will for Blaine. He lost the puck, and Flaherty comes back. Tried to feed Spihar, but Public was watching him like a hawk. Look out, Blaine changing right in front of the bench. Not too many in on the ice. Wheeler right back. He already has two points in this game on a goal and an assist. Now Blaine trying to get an odd mad rush. Here's Will with a long shot, and that just misses. Spihar clears the zone. Perez shoots it in. Perez out there with Miskowick and Johnson. There's a shot, and that just misses. A nice, sharp angle shot there by number 28, Tom Ryman. Actually, the goaltender got a glove on it, and he didn't get all of it. It was oh. almost like the first goal that Blaine scored in that first period. He got it and just didn't get it all, and it just went by the corner of the net. Close call for Duluth East, and Ryman almost had himself a goal right here. You see that? Just hit the glove and just by the net. 
Go to the glove hand side of Kyle Colquist. We'd like to welcome everybody up in the Duluth and Iron Range area, and of course the Arrowhead region on KDLH out of Duluth. Very pleased to have you on board. And we certainly hope your favorite team wins tonight. Whomever that may be. Here is Ryan Cool. His younger brother is a backup goaltender for the Greyhounds. Cool going back behind his goal as Colquist stops it there. Cool backhands it over into the corner. Ben Johnson gets it out to center ice right now for Tofty. John Tofty just shoots it in. And the Greyhounds make a line change. Coming back to get into the play is Finnegan throwing a nice check on number 31, Vince Perez of Blaine. And Tofty up ice. Birmingham stops it behind the goal. Pudlick taps it around the boards, but not out. Kept in by Almquist. Trying to work it down low, does. Here's Ted Soikin in with the puck. Soikin in, getting it over to Almquist. Cuts in front, shoots, blocked the rebound. Oh, and Soikin in is robbed by Birmingham. Oh, two great saves by him. That was close. The score remains 3-1. to one. Duluth East on top, and they continue to press. Being a parent means getting the most for your money. Introducing the 96 Lumina. For a lot less than Ford Taurus GL, you get 24-hour roadside assistance, a bumper-to-bumper -bumper limited warranty, and now you can get a great lease payment on a well-equipped Lumina. You see, we've worried about everything, so you don't have to. The 1996 Lumina, a car your family can trust. Test drive one today at your Heartland Chevrolet Geo dealers. Cold temperatures across the state will continue. We'll see you again next hour with another weather update. Two great saves by Birmingham. One on Almquist and then the rebound on Soiken. And here's Almquist taking a shot. And after that save is made, Soiken right on the doorstep right there. Another one. And it goes right between the legs but not over. And Birmingham stops it. Spihar back in the point. His locker is going to try and get it back to him when he does. There's a shot. It's blocked. Now here is number six, Flaherty, passing it off to the corner. Scott Brown for Blaine, can't clear it. Locker setting up behind the goal. Tried to work it back, but it's intercepted by 21, Bodie. And it'll be icing called against the Bengals. Bodie had to just take one more step, and he'd have been over the red line. He wouldn't have had icing called. Line's been right on the line. Noticed he wasn't over, and you get it called. You got to make certain when you're getting the puck in the zone, look where you are. I'm surprised, Lou, over the two days, a number of times, We've seen that. Why can't kids realize they've only got two strides to go? And sometimes they think just because their stick goes over, it's going to be all right. But they want you to be across the line, take that extra stride, and you're okay. Here's Spihar trying to center it. It's intercepted, but not cleared. Clarity wraps it off the board, but not out. Or not down low, rather, and Blaine clears the zone. Gunderson gets back, and the deflection goes out of play. Overall, Blaine has played a very solid game thus far. They're trailing on the scoreboard 3-1, but outside of those two chances by Soikinen and, and Alquist, if you notice, the only guys getting the chances, and they weren't a lot, and they don't need a lot, Wheeler, Spihar, Locker. Yep. Outside of that, it's been a very even game. Blaine's doing a real good job eliminating people, using their body, getting the puck out of the zone. They've been physical. They're not giving up a lot of quality chances. But Unfortunately for them, you don't have to give up many chances. You just got to give up a chance when you're playing speed hard and it ends up in the net. <laughs> Too bad that line's here. Yeah. <laughs> for playing thus far. Toffee passing it up ice now for Johnson, who's long shots on goal. Birmingham shovels it off to the right for Perucci. Down ice it goes. There will be no icing here as Mills is back for it for Duluth. Johnson can't clear. It's intercepted. Here's Pekarski. Going to the corner, takes a sharp angle shot. Work back to the point. Pudlick's effort is blocked. Tapped off the wall by Toffee. Pudlick gets it again for Blaine. Losing it. Here's Johnson for Duluth trying to cut in. Poke checked away from him. And Blaine doing a very good job of keeping 
the Greyhounds to the perimeter. You see, yeah, the defensive lane has been very physical and very smart, just forcing the guys to the boards. Ten and a half to go here in period number two. Duluth East building up a two-goal lead in the first period, and it still stands. Bob was not about to pay a delivery charge on his new refrigerator. He should have gone to Warner Stallion for free delivery. Plus, save now on Amana, GE, KitchenAid, Maytag, and Whirlpool Appliances. Zero percent financing, builders and remodelers packages available now. If we've got it, it's on sale. Warner Stallion, where you get professional installation, free recycling, and always free Metro delivery. You should have gone to Warner Stallion. You could win a $3,000 vacation package. Just stop in any First Bank location to ask about First Bank's Fast Line Bill Pay, free trial offer, and register. Two grand prize winners will be announced live during our telecast of the boys' basketball championship game. And no, Louie and I will not be doing the round ball. Here comes a three-on-one effort. Swinging in with a shot. It's blocked by Birmingham, and he pulls in the rebound to allow no further Duluth opportunity. Patosha fed a perfect pass across. Birmingham had, had to not only make the save, but fall on that rebound because right on his doorstep, Almquist was there. Good pass across from Patosha to Soikinen. Shot on net and looked driving to the net. Number 12 right there, Almquist, looking for the rebound. This line has been... Very solid throughout this game thus far, and they've had four good chances. Birmingham not allowing them to have anything. Look at Dave Spihar, second in the state in points. Led the team in goals and points this year. Had two goals and one assist in the championship game for the section. Chris Walker turns and fires. Spihar's knocked down, and Blaine comes back up ice. Number nine is Dan Johnson who shoots it in. He had two assists in his section final victory over Osseo. Falling to his knees and bouncing back up as Walsh who centers it and it just missed Dan Johnson. Gunderson for the lose. Tries to clear but it's not out. Winding and firing and that blast by Walsh is just wide. On the other points, number three, Scott Brown. Shoots it back in, delayed offside, but Blaine tags up and play continues. Flaherty bounces it out. Now here's a two on two. Wheeler with Spihar. Wheeler centering pass block. There's a Spihar is hauled down in front. There's going to be another penalty. Spihar <laughs> fires right on. <laughs> he almost had the hat right there. You know, one of the real amazing things is you look at Spihar, the way he scores goals, that's something, but you got to pay tribute to both Locker and Wheeler. They've played together for a long time. You can tell the way they find Spihar in the opening. You don't just pass the puck to spots unless you have a good indication that someone's going to be there. And these three have played together for so long that somehow, some way, even through traffic, they find Spihar. Here's a play right here. Spihar driving to the net, gets taken down. That's why the penalty's coming. And then he's going to bounce back up. Locker behind the net gets it out front to Wheeler, who backhanded across. And Spihar had a terrific chance. A big save by Birmingham. Mills with a shot. Birmingham with the save. Another good save by Birmingham. And Mills getting the shot on net. And he's got Alquist going to the net at the same time. The Luth defensemen have been the most proficient in the tournament thus far of anyone we've seen of putting the puck on the net, not missing the net, but getting it on the net. It's so critical to get that puck on the net. You miss the net when you're shooting from an angle like that, it usually comes right out of the zone. And you gotta go all the way back down and start all over again. This is Blaine's first trip to the state tournament, but for goaltender Mark Birmingham, his second. He moved from Edison. They were in the Class A tourney two years ago. Cool. Long pass up ice. Locker's effort is blocked. Hauling it down in the middle is Mills. Waits for people to get onside. Slowly brings it in. Brings it around the boards. Locker after it. So is 27. Mike Walsh to Blaine. Locker back to the point. Mills tees it up. His shot right on. The rebound is good. Dave Spihar gets the hat trick. <laughs> you know, it's just amazing. Now, most other guys, 
the shot from the point might have gone in. <laughs> this time the goalie gets a part of it, makes the save. Who's on the doorstep? Spihar, and he gets number three. 4-1 for Duluth East. Good shot again from the blue line. Just a crucial shot. That getting the puck on the net that way. It was Gunderson from the point after he gets the feet from Locker down low. Locker smartly gets it back to the blue line. See that shot right on the net. Puck comes free. Where does it go? It didn't go to the left where Wheeler was. It goes to the right where Spihar is. <laughs> Dave Spihar. That's four hat tricks in the state tournament. Three last year and one this year. And we haven't played half the game yet. You think Doug Woot might be smiling? Boy, he will be smiling. <laughs> but I got to tell you, at the same time, they're going to have to get somebody in the middle, and they should, that can find Spihar the way Locker finds it. Yes. And Locker's going to Wisconsin. It's not a package deal. And you remember the Broadens playing together. Neil used to find Aaron. Fellas like that that play together really have a knack of finding one another, even in traffic when they're covered. They just know where the guy's going to be. Andy Mills, a newcomer to that line, has three points in this game. Here's Flame with an attack. They need a goal in a hurry here so this doesn't turn into a rope. Behind the goal, lucky number 13 is Steve Sikonen, and he is just leveled. There will be another Blaine penalty coming up, this time for charging. We'll be back for another East Power Play. Front desk. If you want to check into this kind of room, with comfort and space for you and your guests and all the luxuries of home. A conversion van from GMC gives you all the pull you need. Now check into a new conversion van and get the added comfort of $1,500 cash back. See your GMC dealer today. Lane defensemen have been physical. They have pinched in, but this time Mike Walsh takes just one or two Many steps, he gets called for charging. Duluth East back in a power play. And it was a real heavy check. Walsh using his body, but just a couple too many steps. And he gets called. East has a chance to widen their lead, leading 4-1 with 749 to go in the second. After just getting a power play goal by Dave Spihar. Spihar to Locker, looking for Wheeler, and that just misses. Andy Wheeler in the corner. Pass hits the referee in the skates. Scott Brown can't clear, but he has some help, and that'll send Duluth retreating. Spihar to Flaherty. Headman pass onto the stick. Of 28 locker going right in, and that bounces high off of the goalkeeper, Birmingham. Spihar to the point. Gunderson wobbles it, and Blaine clears. Duluth has just given up the puck twice in his own not sharp passes. Unfortunately, one hit the referee, but that one should have been made. You don't get the puck back at the blue line and give a soft pass back in the corner. When you're in a power play, anytime you're in the offensive zone, but when you're in a power play especially, you got to move the puck quick. If you're playing a, an aggressive penalty killing team, they're going to be forcing the puck area at all times. So the quicker you move it, the easier you're going to have an opportunity to get someone open and get a chance. If you put a soft pass in there, then you're going to have some problems. They're going to get intercepted. And Blaine is an aggressive team. So they'll chase that puck and they'll go after it. They've played well. Yes, it's they just have. too bad they've had to run up against the Northeast opening game. Dylan Mills takes a shot across the ankle, but gets the power play started up into the attack zone. Matthias. This is a dangerous line that some people forget about because they're so deep with Duluth. Under the point. Back down low for Matthias, number eight. Setting it up behind the net now. They work the umbrella. Look for the open man, Mills at the point. Sykin and feeds it to Mills. Now to the other door for Cool. Back down to Matthias. Matthias looking, looking. Goes behind the goal for Sykin. Back to Matthias, turning out of the corner. Now Matthias gets the puck. 
Looks to the point, finds Cool. Now to Mills. Mills back down to Ted Soikinen. Soikinen cuts towards the middle. Back on the point for Mills. There's a shot. Laid on. Puck is loose. Birmingham one save. Now Cool fires. And that's blocked by a sprawling Blaine player. Mills keeps it in. Power play over. And I tell you, Blaine has done a good job in killing off three of four Duluth power plays. Here's Mathias, a backhander right on. The puck loose, Alquist can't get to it. And the Bengals put it out to neutralize. Real good reaction by Blaine. All four of them on the ice that time were reacting very quickly to the puck, not giving up any good chances to Duluth East on that power play. Going back in his own end is Pat Finnegan, the ninth grader. Finnegan with a good spin in the corner. Gets the puck on the stick, and Matt Latour as a fourth line is now out. Here's John Toffey getting it up for Brandon Johnson. Toffey, make that 22, Finnegan poking it around. And the Bengals retreat into their own zone for Mike Walsh. <laughs> a little lucky there. They hit <laughs> too many men on the ice that hit him on the skate. Miskowitz puts it out in front. That just misses the breaking defenseman, Scott Brown. Here is Pat Gunderson. Ringing it around for Chris Walker. Finds Wheeler cruising through the middle. Here's Wheeler into the zone. Wheeler to Spihar. He's upended and never got to the puck. And he was shadowed <laughs> tremendously well on his way to the net. Meanwhile, back come the Bengals. Winding and firing is Perez. And that goes up into the audience. Four to one, Duluth East leading. As you take a look at the first bang scoreboard, we'll take a short pause and return to downtown St. Paul. On the world premiere of the Paranormal Borderline, see footage of an actual Yeti. Star Trek's Jonathan Frakes hosts. Tuesday at 8 on UPN 9. Duluth East has been very effective in their own zone. As you said it earlier, Wally, the defense from Duluth East are effective and they're not spectacular looking, but they get the job done and they really cut down the chances that they give up. You don't see many quality scoring chances. Blaine's working hard, been physical, had the puck in his zone, but thus far not a lot of quality scoring chances against Golton or Colquitt. Now these four main guys all played in the tournament last year, so they're very seasoned players by state tourney standards. With the puck is Flaherty. Finding a man up the middle, it's Ted Soikinen going in two on one, a backhand pass to Potosha. Just doesn't quite get through. And Blaine coming back. They're in the dark blue with light blue and white trim. There's a long shot and that just missed. From the point, Pudlick shot is right on goal. Clarity wheels it around, but not out. Walls kept it in. Now Pudlick drives it right back in. Bengals have had some good momentum at times. Pudlick on the boards with a high rising shot going off target. Another shot by Pudlick is on goal. And here's Matthias playing it around to the other door for Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson now up to Tofty. John Tofty just clears it in. And Johnson's there. Johnson trying to pry it loose, does. But he's all tied up, and Pudlick steps in for Blaine. Pudlick the center for Dan Johnson. But he slowed down, and this allows Dylan Mills to get the puck. Right out, Mills getting a little sloppy there. He was a second team all tournament player last year. <laughs> that was scooped up by Cool and draws a whistle. Face off will come in neutral ice. We'll take a short time out with two and a half minutes to go in the period. And in Duluth, up by a Dave Spihar hat trick. It's a blockbuster march on UPN. Blockbuster action, blockbuster stars, blockbuster excitement. You want to be very careful and not do what Cool just did when he 
grabbed the puck and held on to it, got a whistle. <laughs> Very lucky. Close your hand on the puck. Many times you're going to be called to delay a game. So just be batting it down and don't control it with your hand. Steve Saikinen. That's a long pass. pass. It is. There's a breakaway now for Walker. In alone. He scores. You can see that one coming, oh. Wally. Just waiting for it to happen. A good passing play from deep in the zone. The outlet pass is right on the tape. The next one to Locker puts him home free right in front of the blue line. And Duluth East catching Blaine, putting on some pressure, all five guys deep. And you don't get five deep when you pass the puck as well as Duluth does because you're going to have someone lurking as he, Locker did right there. You see him just inside the blue line. Good move that Locker made. He sees a goaltender coming out to poke check the puck. Just goes around him. But he made a real good move controlling the pass. The pass wasn't right on the tape. Took it off the skate, made the play, and Locker gets a goal. Blaine bringing it right back into the attack zone. In uh, is Mike, Nick Anderson for Duluth East. There's a shot going off the base of the net. Picked up by Almquist, but we had a penalty coming uh, against Duluth East. It'll be their first penalty of the game. Well, a cross-checking call going against Duluth East, and Blaine now will have an opportunity to put some pressure on Colquist. Try and narrow that lead, trailing 5-1 to one at this time. Finnegan, a freshman defenseman, just a youngster, good skating ability, good puck handling ability. He just cross-checked in front of the net, and now he's going to be sitting it out. Lane on the power play, trailing 5-1, 1.44 to go here in the second period. Lane's first power play. And they really need to get something going here. 5-1, Duluth East leading as Dave Almquist clears the zone for the Greyhounds. Blaine, starting it up. Pudlick lost his glove as he was hooked from behind. Lost the puck as well. And back behind the net now is Brad Zinda. Zinda's a big guy, big scorer. Finished 10th in the conference in scoring. Brings the Bengals on the attack. But it rolls away from him right on goal. And now a little rough stuff going on as Zinda was flattened by Gunderson. And we're going to get another penalty here. And you're going to see a five on three. And this is going to be a great opportunity for Blaine to get back on the board. Now he's going to take both, I think. Oh, Lou. Yeah, one's got roughing and the other's got cross checking. Zinda's going to go as well. Well, four and three is still better than five and four. So. Yeah. And Westrom just joining us in the box, getting ready for the Apple Valley game, bringing us up some notes. We've got a sub plane on that Apple Valley team. Be a big thrill for him. That'll be coming up next as Apple Valley will take on Alexandria. Should be a good game. Two big teams. They like to play physical, and that's going to be a fun one. This is going to be fun watching this penalty kill because Coach Randolph has got Locker out there right now and Spihar. And so with the two forwards, you know that these two fellows, if they get an opportunity, they're going to go down and, and there he goes right now. <laughs> Spihar was already pulling out of his own. Had that been a little higher, he'd have a breakaway. But Randolph was using his fourth line to kill the last penalty and had him on the edge just previous to that. But now down four and three. Goes back with Locker and Spihar to kill the four and three. And on defense, <laughs> Mills crazy. as well. You're down to three skaters and you got two forwards out there, eh? Well, you see that a lot because uh, when you're you're playing almost a diamond, and many times, you know, a forward could be as effective as a defenseman, and he also is much more of a threat when he gets the, the puck. So you see five on threes many times, two forwards in a defenseman. Uh oh, Duluth's got too many men on the ice. It hasn't yep. been picked up by the officials yet. The Greyhounds dump it all the way down. They <laughs> still don't realize that they've got too many men on the ice. Neither does Blaine. <laughs> Everybody's just letting it go. And there he finally got it right now. <laughs> I think we we're the only guys in the building that saw it. And there's the call. <laughs> Probably says there's a few too many jerseys out there. Well, you, 
It's going to have a five on three if after 24 seconds. We got 24 seconds left in the first penalty to, to Duluth. And then you've got a minute in each of the others. It'll be five and four, but this penalty here will be delayed starting. Going over to the bench to talk to the coach. I don't know what you're talking to him about because there was four guys standing there. Maybe he's just determining who he wants to put in the box. So we'll have a four and three for quite a while here. Yeah, we're going to stretch well in the third period with only nine seconds left in this one. Right. But there's an opportunity for Blaine if they have a chance to get in the game. Uh, it's presented to them right now. Well, you got 8.7 seconds to go here in the second. Unless they get a good chance right off the bat, the period's going to be over. It's blocked by the defenseman Dylan Mill or uh, Ryan Cool. And the period comes to a close with the sounding of the buzzer. And the Duluth East Greyhounds pad their lead by two more. And have a commanding five to one bulge after two periods of play here from the downtown St. Paul Civic Center. Wayne giving yeah. a good effort, Wally, but you have to realize when you've got a scoring machine like Duluth has got, they don't need many good opportunities, especially when Spear's on the ice. And they make them count. You see a 5-1 score. Shots on goal 25 to 13. But outside of four or five other good scoring opportunities Duluth had, Blaine's played a pretty effective game. They've been physical. They're trying everything they can to slow down East. The only thing for Blaine's part, they haven't been effective at all getting opportunities themselves. They've had no quality scoring chances for the most part. And that's something that they've got to work on, especially in this power play. Get somebody in scoring position and get them to punch and get an attempt at getting a goal. But at least they've been able to get out of their zone. Oh, yeah. They've they, had good neutral uh, ice play and, and good uh, efforts are coming out of their own end. And their defense have been really physical. They've taken the body every chance they've got. The punt they've the ground. They've seen a lot of them. They, they've really taken the man out. They've played the board strong. They just have got a machine against them when that Duluth has got the first line out there. They've got just tremendous puck presence. They know where to put it. They know how to get in the opening. It seems every time they're out there, you know somehow somebody's going to get in the opening there and get that puck in the zone. Just like the goal of Locker had. It looked like Blaine's putting on some pressure, but you see Locker out there, and you could just sense that somehow he was going to get that puck. And he did. He got a breakaway, and he put it away. Jeff Grayson is with us downstairs. Take it away, Jeff. All right, thanks, Wally. I'm with Blaine Coach Steve Larson. Coach, what do you say to your guys now after the second period, going to the third at, at, after the way things are going right now? Well, we, did, you know, we just got to, we're doing some, some things well out there, but obviously one of the things that Duluth East does so well is they transition so quickly where all of a sudden, you know, they're moving back up the ice, and lo and behold, you get a guy that sneaks behind you. And it's tough. They're just doing a great job. We're just got to tell our guys to keep being aware of that. Try not to let them get behind them. But keep doing the things that we're doing well on the forecheck because, you know, there's some things we're doing real well, too. So Sometimes when teams play Duluth East, you'll hear coaches say that these guys are so good that sometimes players get caught up almost watching them play. But that's not, that's not the case tonight, or what do you think? I'm sure that's possible. I think the biggest thing sometimes is guys start to anticipate the puck too much and they're watching the puck rather than coverages. And I think that's what we're getting caught with on occasion is watching the puck rather than our coverages. All right, Coach, thanks for joining us. Sure. We'll let you get in the dressing room. That's Steve Larson of Blaine. Right now, Duluth East living up to its number one ranking. Back with more UPN 9 game time, including a news update from Gary Repstock when we come back. The Thompsons got their home equity installment loan from First Bank, not just because they could finance their car and deduct the interest, or get convenient ways to manage their money, or pay for the new addition to their home. They chose First Bank because the bank loaned them 100% of the equity in their home, which let them consolidate their finances and their family all at once. For special rates and no closing costs, apply by phone today. Find powerful deals on tools at Menards. Vice grip clamps are great for many jobs. Locking players grip tight plus cut wire, only $6.48. The quick grip clamps easily, just $8.92. Decorate your home with shelving from Newell Door File. Choose from walnut, pecan, or white, starting at just $2.49. Brackets and standards are also on sale. 
Save more on shelving at Menards. Save big money at Menards. You know, if you enjoy doing it yourself, Champion Auto Stores is the right place with right products, right prices, and right answers. But if you'd rather have someone do it for you, check out Crown Auto Service Centers, where we'll give you the best in service at the right price. Do it yourself, or we'll do it for you. Stop in right now and save on Snap Fuel Additives. Choose Octane Boost, Gas Treatment, Injector Cleaner, or Fuel System Cleaner. Right now, just 88 cents each. As a rule, engines develop good torque only when you push hard on the accelerator. But even at idle speed, a Dodge Magnum V8 can pull not only this loaded Ram 1500, but this loaded 2500, and a loaded 3500 as well. 15 tons. That's because every Ram truck has to pull much more than its own weight, even at idle speed. That's our rule. Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. This is a Minnesota 9 News Update. Good evening, I'm Gary Rebstock. The two Panic Hookin restaurants that were closed yesterday will be back in business tomorrow morning. State tax agents raided the local chain because it owes nearly $300,000 in back taxes. The president of the company met with the state revenue commissioner today to reopen the restaurants. Panic Hookin has filed for reorganization under Chapter 11. And the Wilmer School District is under fire for discrimination. Latino parents representing 850 students filed a class action suit claiming racial bias against Hispanics. Complaints are widespread. The parents say school officials have refused to address their concerns. We'll have more news, weather, and sports at the end of the game. If you really want to see what goes on behind the scenes, you could learn to operate a boom mic. Or you can catch the entertainment report on Minnesota's most convenient newscast. All scientific findings suggest it's become as invaluable to mothers as the cordless phone. Get the point, you know, the point. What is tougher, getting to the top or staying there? Duluth East, the defending Class AA champion. Well, right now they're trying to stay on top, and they're doing a good job in their first game defending their state title. They lead right now 5-1 against Blaine after two periods of play in our third game on AA quarterfinal Thursday. We will be back with more, including Wally Shaver and Lou Nanny's look at period number two, plus the key stats, as game time on UPN 9 continues from the St. Paul Civic Center. Predecessors, more powerful, and yet beneath its tough exterior, it's also more accommodating and approachable. Introducing the all-new Forerunner, sophisticated, refined, fearless. Recently, Dairy Queen has been filling my head with all kinds of new Blizzard and Breeze flavors. What do you think about thick, chunky fudge Oreo, crunchy cappuccino heat, or creamy mint M&Ms at a buck 69? Mm -hmm. And how about those other Blizzard and Breeze flavors, all starting at a buck 69? I can't wait to dig in. But first things first, for hot eats, cool treats, think DQ. It's tournament time, and you could be a winner in the First Bank March Tournament Sweepstakes. Just stop in any First Bank location to ask about First Bank's Home Equity Loan Special Offer and register for the First Bank March Tournament Sweepstakes. You could win a $3,000 vacation package. Two grand prize winners will be announced live during UPN9's game time coverage of the Boys Basketball Championship March 23rd. Brought to you in part by First Bank, proud partner of the Minnesota State High School League. So visit First Bank and register to win, plus ask about the Home Equity Loan Special Offer from First Bank. Being a parent means getting the most for your money. Introducing the 96 Lumina. For a lot less than Ford Taurus GL, you get 24-hour roadside assistance, a bumper-to-bumper -bumper limited warranty, and now you can get a great lease payment on a well-equipped Lumina. You see, we've worried about everything, so you don't have to. The 1996 Lumina, a car your family can trust. Test drive one today at your Heartland Chevrolet Geo Dealers. Duluth East head 
the coach, Mike Randolph, was saying he had tried a lot of different left wingers to put on the line with Chris Walker and Dave Spihar. He finally went to Andy Wheeler and decided he was going to give that a go. Then he went up to Spihar and Locker and said, look, Wheeler's the last guy we've got to try on left wing there. If he doesn't work, you guys are going to have to go up there alone. So they looked at each other and said, well, that wouldn't be bad. <laughs> but Wheeler's been a big contributor here tonight, Louie. He's picked up four points skating with Locker and Spihar. And let's take a look at how they got things going here in the second period. Well, really, the defense were the key initiators. Here's Mills shooting from the point. Rebound right in front, going to Spihar after Locker had passed that puck back to Mills. And Spihar puts that one away. Now look at the second goal. This one, you see Finnegan down deep, the freshman defenseman right there. Feed it to Wheeler. Wheeler with a long pass. Coach of Blaine was lamenting the fact that people get open deep, and there's Locker right inside the blue line getting a long pass from Wheeler, going in alone. Nice little dipsy doodle move around the goaltender and putting it away. But if you notice, both of those plays, defenseman key on the goals. Finnegan with an outlet pass, Mills with a good shot down low in front of the net. And that's sort of the unsung part of this Duluth team. How effective those defensemen are. The big line has done all the damage for Duluth East Greyhounds as they're on their way to repeating as state champions. Hurry in for huge kitchen and bath savings at Menards where you'll find great deals on bath vanities from Medallion. Choose from many styles. Solid oak frame or white raised panel styles are just $99. Plus save on kitchen sinks and faucets from Elger. This cast iron sink is $139. A kitchen faucet with spray, $79.98 after rebate. From kitchen to bath, you'll find it all at Menards. Save big money at Menards. So, are you with AT&T? No. Oh, how's your long-distance company working out for you? I'm not happy at all. But what if I gave you some really good reasons to switch to AT&T, including up to 100 free AT&T minutes? That would be well, wonderful. Only AT&T customers can get AT&T True Reach savings. I didn't know that. Yeah, spend $25 a month and you save 25% on every type of call on your AT&T phone bill. It's easy. It's free. You can call anyone anywhere in the U.S. And you see your savings on your AT&T phone bill. I don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. <laughs> no, but you do have to be an AT&T customer. Switch now and we'll send you AT&T long distance certificates good for up to 100 free AT&T minutes. You can use your free minutes to call, well, anybody. So, what are you going to do? Switch to AT&T. Good. Then why not give us a call right now? You didn't ask me what I was going to do. Okay. Who's the long distance company for you? It's hands down AT&T. That's your true choice. AT&T. on UPN 9. Along with Lou Nanny, Jeff Grayson, this is Wally Shaver and the view from our Viking Land cam. And as we dial in on that scoreboard, there's an interesting story there. And there's a lot of penalties, Louie, on the Duluth East side. A glorious chance now for Blaine with the manpower advantage to try and get back into this third period. That's right. We got a delayed call to Alquist because Duluth East already has two people serving the penalty. Lane has got to take some opportunities here, put some shots on the net, and get on that scoreboard. They're trailing by four, and anytime you're trailing to lose East by four, you're in dire straits because, you know, he still has the capability to score more goals. But Lane starting this period with a power play, and they've got to make use of that. They've got to put some pressure on goaltender Colquist and get some quality chances, something that they haven't been able to do thus far. They get puck possession in the zone, but they're not able to get the scoring chances that they need to beat the goaltender. And this is an opportunity for them to do that. One thing that Duluth East coach Mike Randolph had commented on, and we almost heard the exact thing coming in our intermission from Steve Larson, but Duluth likes to stretch out the rink. They'll float guys up high and look for those long passes, and it has worked, and we certainly saw a great example of that on Locker's breakaway goal. Yeah, they've got a, a lot of confidence in their, the defense. You can't 
do that kind of play unless you've got confidence in your defense that can handle the puck and get it out. Because you know your defense is going to be under a lot of pressure. If you've got a strong four checking team, they've got three in there, plus the defense, if you start pulling forwards out, yeah. you've got to have confidence. And Duluth, you know, they've already got a lead, and they start stretching out more and more as they got a bigger lead, so if they turn one over, they're not as concerned. As the game was closer earlier on, they didn't do nearly as much of it as they're starting to do now. And as Blaine takes chances and has to press, at the same time now with that big lead, you're going to see Duluth really spreading that ice out, and don't be surprised, you'll see some end zone passes all the way to the far blue line, because Duluth will be looking to do that as Blaine puts on some offensive uh, forechecking pressure. It's a four on three, skating advantage. Here's Mike Walsh setting it up for the Bengals. Over to Pudlick. His shot knocked down in front. The return pass to the point. Caught Walsh breaking, and the effort was behind him. Now Walsh on the far side with a lot of open ice. Stabbed off of his stick neatly by Dylan Mills. Over to Mike Pudlick. Pudlick going right in, but it's broken up. Locker takes the puck and clears. Three penalty killers on the ice now for Duluth or New. Same power play unit remains out for Blaine. Four on three, long shot, stop. Here's a rebound attempt by Vince Perez. Goes wide, Flaherty. Two more penalized players are out of the box, one from each team, so now it's a one-man advantage. And a five on four skating advantage for the Blaine Bengals. That will last for another minute five. Here they come into the zone. Brad Zinda with a shot going wide. Turned off the board by Patosha of Duluth. Blaine's got to start getting the puck into the scoring area. They're taking too many shots from the angle. And all the goaltender's got to do there is cut off the angle. And if they hit him fine, if they miss him, he usually misses the net and comes right out of the zone. They're not getting any shots from in between the dot areas in the center of that ice. We've got to get some scoring chances from the slot area, something they're not even to do thus far. Here's a steal. Toffee. Oh, and he lifted that one just wide. Flaherty, uh, excuse me, 22 is Finnegan pinching in. Keeps the puck deep in the zone. After it now is number 15, Ben Johnson. He's checked by two Bengals. That's two freshman defensemen out there for Duluth East right now, killing this penalty. Finnegan and Kloikman. Finnegan relays the puck down low after it is John Coffey. Also there is Scott Brown for Blaine. East Gets it over to his partner, Mike Walsh, just as the penalty time to East has expired, putting them back at full strength. And we have an icing call against Blaine. Five ones to score. We'll be back to the round building at the corner of Kellogg and Seven. Top line putting Spear back to the point, and the puck comes right back to him. He slides it across. One thing Locker is very proficient at is winning those draws while he's been yeah, just yeah. here tonight, especially in the offensive zone when he wants to get some chances. Locker to Wheeler to Spear. A return pass to Locker just misses. Flaherty hangs it back down low for Spear. A behind the back pass. Now it's taken by Wheeler in the corner. Wheeler, back to the point man. There's a shot right out by Flaherty, and a nice save by Birmingham. And now Spihar mixes things up in front of the goal. Well, Spihar was getting checked very closely by the defenseman. They're staying right with him, coming around the net. Ryman stayed right with him again, took him right to the center. And you see Spihar down in front, screening the goaltender, but getting taken out right there again. So he got a little feisty. Actually, that was public again. Both defensemen are leaning on him every time he gets in yeah. that net. Well, that's what they have to that's do. Right. And, and Spihar is used to that. Randolph was saying that's been happening all year long. Sure, you don't score goals the way he does and not get attention. Yeah. <laughs> or you just get a pile more. 
Here is Steve Soikinen, the freshman, one of two freshmen on this team. They just keep reloading up there, don't they, with this school? And we've got some good-looking youngsters there. Chasing it down is Matt Latour. Fourth line out for Duluth East. They've got a four-goal lead. They can afford to do so. Latour is alone out in front. Pass doesn't connect, and the Blaine Bengo start back. Blocking the pass was Nick Anderson. Pretty good for Duluth East to be able to play this fourth line in the six defenseman as much as they're doing here tonight. Because as they move on into the next game, they'll have their fellows a little more rested. They, they have been under all that as much intense pressure maybe as the winner of the next game. And besides, Spiar's always got already got his hat trick. <laughs> well, I'm sure Spiar doesn't like to see it. You know, goal scorers want a lot ice time. They want ice. They don't worry about <laughs> getting rested. <laughs> At the point is number 27, Mike Walsh. The shot is blocked. Here comes number 12, Dave Alquist, down the left side, trying to get around. He does. He shoots. Oh, and that's stuffed up along the goal post by Birmingham. Big hit throw back behind the Blaine goal. Here's Ted Slaken in the spot. He's checked, but tries to spring loose. Public lifts it high in the air, but not out. Pitching in to keep it alive is cool for Duluth. He's a cool customer down there. Almquist, number 12. Rolls it out in front, taken and shoots. And a nice save there by Birmingham. Pass back in front of the game. And the Bengals finally pick it off and flip it to center. Striking and pushes it in. The low East chasing on the goal. Wheeler with the puck. Looking for Locker. Locker has it hit his skates. Looking alone in front. Spihar. Spihar gets the puck. Cuts towards the net. Here's Wheeler. He scores! Well, the defenseman's all tied up, taking care of Spihar down in front of the net. Spihar tried to get free. He couldn't, but the puck hit him. It laid right there for Wheeler, and Wheeler walked in with nobody there to beat but the goaltender, and he did that to put Duluth East up 6-1. to one. Spihar lurking down low, got the attention of the Blaine defenseman. He came across to take him, fought Spihar off the puck. You'll see the pass come through here. Watch Spihar to your left, down low. He's going to get checked right here. That puck comes, lays right in front, and here comes Wheeler all alone. Good little play to get that puck from a skate to a stick. Made a backhand move. And the big line scores again. This time it's Wheeler making it 6-1. to one. Wheeler now with two goals and three assists in this game. Spihar gets an assist. He has three goals and two assists. Scott Brown for Blaine. Puts the brakes on and fires up the middle out of everybody's reach. And it'll be icing against Blaine. Pause in the ice. It's now a five-goal lead for Duluth East. They're on a roll, and it's a fun team to watch. We'll be back to finish off this one. Menards can help give your home the perfect look. Start with AB Tico paneling on sale in a wide assortment of tile boards and vinyl decorators. White or almond tile board is great for baths, now $7.92 a sheet. Beautify your floors with vinyl flooring from Tarquette. Choose from several easy-to-care-for patterns. Style Bright has a high-gloss finish, just $6.86 a square yard. Start your home remodeling at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Duluth East keeping up the pressure. They're relentless. They don't lay back at all. That's one of the reasons for their success, is they don't know when to quit. They, they want the puck. They want the score. They don't play the scoreboard or the clock and big lead and say, we'll take it easy. They continue to play their game, and by doing that, they just become more effective as a team. You don't get into bad habits, either. No. You, know, you, you don't get lazy. You don't do things that you shouldn't be doing, and all of a sudden, you know, when you're doing things properly, they just come automatically. The Low Thieves had six games this year in which they scored 10 or more goals. That's not laying off. <laughs> that means you've got a hungry bunch of players. And they all want to play. And right now, there's two freshman defensemen out there. Number 22, 
Pat Finnegan and number 13, Steve Soikinen. You're going to see another power play come up here for Blaine as we got a slashing call coming against the Luthies. Got an injury report. Let's go downstairs to Jeff Grayson. All right, thanks, Wally. Uh, junior Matt Mathias of the Luthies, who wears number eight. He was injured on the third shift of the game. He sprained his left ankle, and he hasn't come back. He's right behind me. I'm down below behind the, the goal, the Luthies goal, and he wanted to come back in so bad because of the state tournament game, but Mike Randolph said you get treatment on that ankle, rest it, and we'll see if we can get you back tomorrow. That's iffy. We'll see how he is tomorrow. That's Matt Mathias, Duluth East Jr. Back upstairs to you guys. Blaine, back in the power play here. With Patosha going off for a slashing, Blaine getting an another opportunity on the power play to put some pressure on Duluth East. Zinda rolls the puck down into the corner for Dan Johnson. His face mask has sprung loose. Now it goes around the goal. For number 15, Jason Muskowit. There's a shot cranking off the goal post by Zinda. Mr. Vick back to the point. Reaching for it now is Walsh. To Zinda. Not a lot of movement. There's a long shot on goal, an easy stop. You look down by the net, well, you see no playing forward around the front of the net. When the puck goes back to the point, he really has nothing to do with it. If he just shoots it from there, all you're going to do is have the goaltender field it very easily because he can see it all the way. Blaine's got to get some of those forwards, at least one of them, to the front of the net. He had one good opportunity there. Zinda was open on the far side. If he could have got a, a pass across from his line mate, he was wide open on the doorstep. Other than that, they've got nobody really putting any pressure in front of that net on the, the loose defense. Both men are able to see over there. Trying a shot with Vince Perez. It was blocked. It's the second power play unit out now for the Blaine Bengals. Steve Larson and Scott Bukestad are their co-coaches on this team. Bukestad, oh, oh. a former Minnesota North Star. Here's Corey Pekarski. And it is offside at the Duluth blue line. There's a good indication of why Blaine's having some problems getting any offensive chances as they come up there on the power play right now they've got nobody going and rather than just trying to throw the puck in someone's got to take control and get control of the zone they've got to get the puck over the blue line while they're controlling it to set up and get a couple chances they're not getting control in the offensive zone at all and that's really giving them problems getting any kind of opportunities offensively 22 seconds left in the blame power play Rolling out the center ice is Pekarski, number 12, as he shoots it in. Getting there first for Blaine is Vince Perez. Perez lost it around the wall. Ben Johnson almost had a two-on-one break going. Now they clear it down ice. And the Luthi is still off another penalty. Five-on-five five now. Perez cut into his left. Moves into the slot. Splits the D, but the puck rolls away. Colquist almost lost the pole, but regains his balance. Here's Chris Walker coming up ice. Has Wheeler with him. Puck was off a skate into the zone. Bounces out in front. The Bengals are there to recover. Now Cool sprints in. Beats Dehar behind the goal. Dehar to Walker. Here's Dehar. He scores! Uh, <laughs> I mean, it looked like it looked like, yeah, it looked like he had no place at all. He made a nice pass to Locker behind the net, and then he broke away. It actually looked like Wheeler was in a better position to score the goal, but Locker knows whenever Spihar is around the net, give it to him. He gave it to him on the short side. Spihar just put that puck, looked like between the legs of the goaltender. Watch the goalie. Here's Locker coming across. Spihar breaking for the net. The goalie seems flat against the post. Somehow that puck found its way, and I believe it was through his legs. Seem to glance off his pad, go through his legs into the net for the fourth goal of the night for Spear and a 7-1 lead with 5.46 to go. That's goal number 50. 5-0. Well, he had 50 again last year. Over 50 after the tournament yeah, was over. Yeah, he did. Unbelievable. Blaine now making a goaltending change. Mark Birmingham comes out, and Jesse Bidall will go in. 
We'll take a timeout and a six goal lead for Duluth East. Hi, I'd like a haircut, please. I'm thrilled. Tired of salons that always give you the phony treatment? Nice hair. At Great Clips, we promise to always serve you in a friendly, courteous manner. Great Clips. Guaranteed satisfaction, guaranteed style. At Great Clips, if you're not 100% satisfied with your haircut, we'll make it right. Guaranteed. Because at Great Clips, our stylists stand behind every haircut. Great Clips. Guaranteed satisfaction, guaranteed style. Well, Wally, we got two goalie changes now. Adam Cool is going in the net for Colquist. As Duluth figures, we might as well give our other goaltender some opportunity. Mike Randolph has been playing all his players here. They're all getting on the ice. Good move by him to give his goaltender, his young goaltender here, a chance as well. So we've got two new goaltenders for the last 5.46 of this period. Duluth East leading 7-1. to one. Really showing another reason why they are so really powerful defensively very very dangerous every time that top yeah. line gets in the offensive zone they are great in position to get goals and they look for one another they find themselves in the open great reactions great intuitiveness to get into open spots and score goals and that's tough for the Blaine Pengals as you take a look at their bench they've had a very good season nothing to be disappointed about Making their first trip ever to the state tournament. They beat Coon Rapids 10 to 1 in their first game, then thumped the Noka 6 to 2 and topped it off by downing Osseo 5 3. Blaine uh, coaches were saying that actually the Osseo game, the section final, was their worst of their last nine contests. They were first in the Twin Cities Suburban West Conference over Elk River, and they were seated number one going into the Section 4 AA playoffs. Adam Cool's got some problems. I think uh, one of his straps is broken or he wants to put his, uh, I think he's going to get his throat protector on. He needs a little help there. Got a little excited, came out in the ice and took the shots, but forgot to have his throat protector on. So <laughs> got to get that on before we get started here. Adam Cool has played uh, two games this year. 1.00 goals against the average. He's 2 and 0 and a 921 saves percentage and one shutout to Luth. He's only a sophomore. Luth has got some youngsters here getting some tournament action. You want to get him tournament, tournament tested? It's a good idea. Bengals number 21, Reed Bodie. Passes it up the middle and here come the Bengals. Trailing by six. Bodie plays it deep into the zone. Hustling in for it and over skating it is Tom Ryman. Here's number 12, Dave Aldquist for Duluth. Long rink wide pass, just too far for Eric Petosha. And now Cool. Ryan Cool. Back comes Blaine, Lee Bodie. His sister was a goalie on the girls' team that went to state for Blaine. So it's been a great year hockey-wise for the Blaine School. Chasing it down is Jesse Nicholson. Lost the puck, the loop, he centers it, and is kicked away by goalkeeper Jesse Beidol. Back on the point, here's Gunderson. Into the corner now for 23, John Coffey. Centers it on in front, trying to get a shot away is Brendan Johnson. He goes into the corner. Now Ben Johnson puts it in front, puck high in the air, bounces in behind. After it is Coffey, 23. He's a big, lanky lad down there. Trying to the Bengals grab it off. And here they come back out of their own zone. Number 31, Vince Perez pushing it ahead for 27, Mike Walsh. He's stiffened as he crosses the line by number four, Cool. At the blue line, a long shot right on goal. And the younger Cool, Adam, the goalie, makes the save. Turning off the boards is Walsh. His shot goes towards the net, never reaches it. And the Greyhounds clear. Stop playing their own zone, but the puck deflects out of play. And that'll bring a stoppage. 
Breaking the action. Duluth East, four goals in one period. Two in the second, two more here in the third. And the three in the first, and they lead seven to one. The scales of justice are about to tilt because Max Swift is coming down on crime with a vengeance. Swift Justice, coming March 17th to UPN 9. Duluth East with a commanding 7-1 lead. Now just playing out the string. They know that they've got this game won. Getting everybody into the game, including their young goaltender, Adam Cool. But every time the top line comes out, you know that they're going to be going after scoring goals. It's just the, the kind of feeling goal scorers have. They want to get chances. They want to put more on the board. Duluth is a very deep hockey club. Even the two lines behind the top line have got the capability of scoring goals, but what they do real yeah. effectively is check. A good checking team, very aggressive. Even when they got three men down, deep four checking, which you think they wouldn't have, they react so well to the puck, it doesn't seem like they get caught in many uh, numbered situations. Bounding across the line is Dan Johnson taking a shot wide of Adam Cool. First man in for it is Jason Miskowick. Miskowick has a lone goal for the Blaine Bengals. And a long shot from the point ricochets up into the crowd. Now under three minutes to go here from the St. Paul Civic Center. And we'll be back to the capital city for more state tournament action. From the network that brings you Star Trek Voyager comes a new generation of heroes. You're mine now. Prepare yourself for Star Command. Monday at 7 on UPN 9. Shots on goal almost double. 31 for Duluth, 16 for Blaine. 2.58 to go in the third period. Adam Cole with a save. Oftentimes, Wally, a goaltender, comes in like Young Cole does there, and the puck comes anywhere around him, they want to freeze the puck. Times like this, the puck was actually a little wide. They give him a shot on net, but it was actually a little wider than net. He got time to play the puck. It's good to... There's a good grab by him. Yep. It's good to learn how to play the puck down with your stick and get it in a position, which is really a talent for your defenseman to come by, not break stride, and get it out of the zone. Goaltenders have a tough time and in this day and age really getting that puck in a playable position for the goaltender, for a defenseman to come and take it out of the zone. And I'll tell you, it's really helpful to have someone like that. Jump Wars is the best I've ever seen. He knew whether you were right handed or left handed, he saw where you coming from and, and that puck would be laid down so you don't have to do anything but skate right into it and skate it out of the zone. It's a good knack for a goaltender to work on. Scott Brown blasts it around to the weak side. Ted Soikin and throws a heavy hit for the little beast. Back in the Bengals, two on one, but it's offside. A little over anxious, a two on one situation. Actually it was going to be three on one, but Perez just got a little ahead of the play. He was offside. Good call by the linesman. And that took away a good opportunity for Blaine to get a scoring chance on the youngster Adam Cool, who has been playing the last few minutes, giving Colquist the rest in the next for Duluth East here. And Coach Randolph has not put that big line out anymore. Wheeler, Locker, and Spihar. Between them, they have all seven goals. Spihar has four goals, two assists. Wheeler, two goals and three assists. Locker, the center, one goal and three assists. Here is Dylan Mills. Played on the Select 17 team for Minnesota last summer and went over to Japan on what had to be a very unique experience. Spinning off the boards and entering the zone is Matt Latour. Drops it back now for Eric Patosha. Patosha to the side of the goal for Tofty. They've got uh, Brandon Johnson who rolls it back in the corner, heads to the front, can't get to the return pass, and the Bengals help it out to center ice. Back on the point. Finnegan, long shot right on goal, and Biddle makes the save. Picking up on the far side now, Matt Carushi. He's had a broken knuckle, missed the section final, but playing in this game. Finnegan hauls down a player. There's going to be a penalty coming up against Duluth East as Mark Will hit the ice with just a minute 18 remaining in this one. Finnegan's going to get called for holding, but the good thing about that play, 
If you look at that penalty, Finnegan moved well towards the puck area. Puck area is coming over, and he went wide. Finnegan had good lateral movement, got up on the puck area, hit him, took him down, and got called for holding, but he made good contact. He closed the gap rather quickly. Something that the defense has got to be able to do is react quickly to a move, closing that gap, and Finnegan did it very well. Afterwards, he pulled him down, going to get a penalty, and he, he doesn't realize it. I think he went to the bench. Here he comes. He didn't know he was getting called for holding, but uh, with a minute 18 to go, it doesn't matter. But good reaction by this freshman defenseman. And that's one thing, Louis, that I've been really impressed with Duluth East on. I know we talk a lot about them, and we certainly don't mean to offend Blaine fans or sound biased, but there are so many things that this team does well. But they just don't give the opposing team much real estate in which to work with. That's right. When, you, when you've got a good team playing, there's so many things you can talk about. And if you're just nullifying the other team for every opportunity, there, there's really not a lot you can say. When, when you've got control of the for the majority of the night, when you're making plays, when you're doing the things you should be doing and you're getting goals, obviously you're going to continue to be talked about because that's the story of the game. And they, they do everything well. They check well. They move well. Very, very good reaction to plays. They back one another up. And they're leading 7-1 because of all those fine little things that they do so well. Because Blaine really has worked hard. Blaine was physical. Took the body. Did a lot of checking. But what they haven't been able to do, Blaine is get some good scoring chances. And that's because of the checking ability. We're going to get some more thumbs here. Because that's a checking ability of this good little hockey team. They get on you real quickly in a good, good reaction. Double minors coming up. We're going to have a slashing and a roughing call. Tipper's getting up a little bit between Ted Soikinen of Duluth East and number 15, Jason Miskowick of Blaine. Miskowick is going to get roughing and Soikinen's going to get slashing. So with only 20 seconds to go here, Blaine's still in the power play, but. We have a four and three situation. Something we haven't had for quite a while. Play with the puck, 12 seconds left. Long pass across ice. We'll have one last attempt. Cool makes the save, tosses it to the corner. And that's it. Well, you go back to the beginning of the game when they're introducing the players from both sides. A lot of very at ease, relaxed, confident looking Duluth East players. You know, good teams and good players just have a presence about them in the ice. And, and certainly they, they've got that air of confidence and you could see it in Duluth East. Not only they've been here before, they've been here and won before. They know how to play the game and they're very, very effective in all phases of the game. Very well coached hockey club, a team that checks well, skates well, moves the puck well, and one thing that they do better than everybody else is score goals. And that's largely because of this fellow right here, Dave Spihar, an outstanding goal scorer, one of the best ever in the state tournament, who continues to impress every time he gets into a, a game. He finds a way to put the puck in the net better than anybody else in the state has done for a long, long time. Four goals tonight for Dave Spihar. The first one came 17 seconds into the hockey game. He had a hat trick under a belt before the game was even halfway old. You know, Wally, he scores goals and chances that people think are just shots on net. Many times you say, well, just put it on the pads because you got nothing else to do with it. Well, when he puts them on the pad, somehow they seem to hit the pad and go in the net or hit the glove and go in the net. He finds a way to make certain that that puck ends up in the net. And he's got a, a talent that's 